In this presentation, we will allocate raw materials to jobs. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our job costing company dashboard. We're going to take a look at our Excel file and consider what our project will be. We're currently in the tab uh, 1.7. You can go to 1.7 in the blue area if you want to actually post it out. We're looking at this journal entry, that being the second journal entry. If we look at our discussion over here, it says the direct materials transferred from raw materials. So it's going to go out of direct out of raw materials into the direct materials. Why? Because we can now apply it to the job. So that's what we're going to do now. Now, in terms of the journal entry, the way we're processing the job cost system, that it's, it's going to go directly to the cost of goods sold rather than go into the work in process account here. And the journal entry is simply going to be for the for the full amount. The uh, 350000 is how much we're going to take out of raw materials and put it into the cost of goods sold. And then the raw materials is going to go down by that 350000 So from a journal entry standpoint, then, all we see are these two accounts, straightforward, easy thing from a journal entry standpoint in terms of the master or the general ledger type of accounts. More complex once we get to the jobs, but from this standpoint, we can see the raw materials was at 400,000. It's going to go down by 350 to 50,000. And then the cost of goods sold is going to go from zero up in this period because we're in, we're in 2020. This does, it doesn't recognize just open jobs. This is just for the items on the income statement in the current period, 2020, even though there were open jobs in the prior time period. And that's going to be increasing to the 350000 Now, the more complex thing is, of course, we need to allocate this out to the jobs. The allocation then is broken out over here. So we just said uh, we're going to allocate out 100000 to 14, 170 to 15, and 80 to 16. So in our Excel sheet, then in our job cost system, we're going to say, all right, there's going to be uh, the 100,000. So the 100,000 to job number 14, the 170,000 to job number 15, and then the 80,000 to job number 16. So these three jobs are in progress and we're buying materials for all of them at the same point. If I was to highlight or, or select those, I'm holding down control to select them. That adds up, of course, to the 350,000. Now, we also want to be able to reconcile this uh, to what's on the general ledger account. So that 350 reconciles out. But if we take total of all the jobs, they're going to add up. Here's the totals to the, the 433. Now, the beginning balances, however, are already in equity. They're already in the equity. So I have to pull out the beginning balances. So this is the amount on the trial balance, right? I have to pull out the beginning balances, which are these items. These were there before the current time period. In order to that's kind of like our reconciliation to tie out the total jobs uh to, to what's on on uh the financial statements so you can see you can kind of tie that out and there and if you know how to tie that out then you can jump back and forth and make adjusting entries if you need to at the end of the time period to record this information into a work in process account or tie it out to a completed contract or a percentage of completion type of method if necessary all right now when we put it into our system we're going to give a little bit more detail than that we're going to take it out and we're going to record the direct materials, but we're also going to give that more detail in terms of the types of materials. So we'll break this out into different types of materials, which will give us more detail in uh, our system as we track the jobs. So it'll all be materials in essence. Well, it will, but it'll be more detailed types of material. Okay, so then I think I've said that a few times now, so we're going to go back on over here. The, we're going to use the document to do this is not going to be a journal entry. And you might think, you know, it would make sense we're taking it from one account to another. Is there a form for that? There's not like a standard form that we can use to do that because it's coming out. Of, it's not a cash account isn't affected. We're not paying anyone. We're taking it out of one asset account and, and putting it to another asset account. So you might think, well, why don't I do that with a journal entry? That's what we did in Excel, for example. Why don't we do that with a journal entry? Because we're not. We're not going to, by the way, we're not going to do that with a journal entry. Why? Because we don't have the items over here i can't assign an item i can get the accounts correct but i can't assign the items and, and i need the items to, to get to get the the projects and everything and the billable items and all that correct so i can't use a journal entry so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a form and this is this is seems unusual but it, it works well we're going to use a form that we're just going to make a journal entry with in essence and we could use a form, for example, if I select the drop down, if I use something like an expense type form, check type form is basically the same thing. I'm going to use an expense type of form, but I'm not actually going to take any money out of the checking account. 
it's just going to be a zero transaction. It's a zero transaction type of form. Now to do this, you might want to set up another checking account, even though it's going to be a zero, you might want to put it into another checking account just to show, just to make sure that those, because they're still going to show up as zeros, just to, to, to make sure that they don't confuse anything. So you could put it into the checking account, but I'm going to make another account over here and I'd like to make a, a new account and I'm going to call it a bank account, but it's just going to be the cash. I'm going to call it a cash on hand. That's fine. I'm going to make it the clearing account, a cash clearing account. And that, that way we can track it in here and the balance should always be zero because it's just, it's just a clearing account for money to go in and out of it. And if there's any balance in it, we could see that there's something wrong with it. So I'm going to say save and close. So we're going to be putting this to the clearing account, the, the payee, I can choose just miscellaneous again for these purposes. And I'm going to minimize this tab. I'm going to go back down and we're going to put the date. I'm going to keep it on uh, the first. So should we keep it on the first? Uh, we put this transaction in on the seventh. Let's make it the seventh. So I'll bring this on up to the seventh. So I'm just going to put my cursor here and say plus, 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 plus. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just say uh, uh, cash. It's fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use both the category field and the items field. I'll use the items field first. And by using both fields, we'll basically nullify the, the recording so that uh, you'll still end up with a, with a zero balance up top. And we'll just basically be recording a journal entry. Uh, but we'll be using expense field to do that. Why? Because that allows us to have the billable item and the customer item as well as the as the accounts that will be affected. Okay, so let's see how this will work. It'll be it'll make more sense if we just do it. So I'm gonna put in our, our items over here. So we're gonna say we have cement and we're gonna enter items that basically just add up to the dollar amount that we need, which was the 350,000 or we'll do this one at a time for the 100,000 and then the, the, the 170 and apply it out to the correct jobs and then get up to that 350,000, okay. So I'm going to go back over and we're going to say that this is going to be for the amount of uh, 14,000 and it's going to be for job number 14. So job number 14 is where we start. I'm going to make that billable. So we'll make it billable as well. If I can do that, if it lets me check that off, there we go. And then we're going to go to the wood. We're going to call it, we need some wood finishing. So I'm going to pick up the wood finishing. Tab, tab, tab. That's going to be for 8,000. 8,000 on the wood finishing. I'm going to say that that is going to be billable as well. It's going to be for number 14. Project number 14. Job, project, job, project. And then we've got the wall covering. Wallpaper. And other kind of things that cover walls. 10,000. And we're going to make that uh, billable. And we're going to make that job or project number 14 as well. Next, we have the stucco, which is going to be other stuff that covers walls, I would th I think. But I mean, it's a different kind of covering altogether. It's in its own category with the stucco. And that's going to be the 16,000. 16,000 on the stucco. I'm going to say, uh, and obviously I'm kind of making this up. So if this number sound a little off or, or weird for what kind of job are you doing over there, it's, you know... <laughs> We're, we're going to make it add up to our totals, so here we go. Next, we're going to have the paint. So I'm going to say paint, uh, wood, and so on. And that is going to be for 12,000. Uh, not 120. Not 120. I'm doing that extra zero thing again. And then I'm going to select the item there. That's going to be for job number 14. So job number 14. And then I'm going to be picking up the marble marble gotta have some marble in there and that's going to be for job number that's uh, going to be for twenty-five thousand. wow it's kind of a lot and then we're going to be okay and then check that off that's going to be for job number 14 as well job number 14 and then next we're going to have finally this is going to be it for this this one component this is going to be the flooring this is going to be the flooring and we'll pick that up that's that wide plank floor it's really nice 14,000 and that's I'm going to check that off as well billable and that's going to be job number 14 job number 14 and then if we see that that should add up then let's see it adds up to the 99,000 I thought it was going to be 100 hold on a second 
I'm going to change the first one up here to 15,000. Let's make this one 15. And that should do it. So if I go to 15, then we're at the 100,000 down below. So that looks good. Everything lines up there. So that should line up then if I go back to our job. Job number 14 uh, is what we're doing right now. Then we'll do 15 and 16. Let's do those separately uh, to not confuse things. We could keep going down here and, and assign the jobs to number 15 below and just do it with a one expense but we're not going to do that we're going to do them separately that'll probably make things a bit easy okay now we know what this would do if we if we recorded this it would decrease the cash by a hundred thousand and the other side would be driven by the items to go to those expense accounts basically the cost of goods sold accounts but we don't want cash to go down by a hundred thousand so so these items are right but we don't want this to be the other side where do we want the other side going we want it to go out of the raw materials inventory so what we're going to do is then use this top category, which basically is just is just the accounts, doesn't include the items, just the accounts, and we want to choose that raw materials account. So I'm going to go up to raw materials, and we're going to say, where was that raw materials? Oh, it's, a, it's this expenses first. It's going to be an asset type of account. Raw materials, other current assets, that's the one we want. And we're going to put this in here for a negative, it's got to be a negative 100,000. So there's a negative 100,000. We're not going to make it... Uh, billable or anything on this side that's all going to be on the item side of things and you'll notice now that uh, the check amount went down to zero so what's going to happen now well it's going to do the same kind of thing that would typically be done with the items recording the expense side of things and then the other side instead of decreasing the cash account will now be decreasing the raw materials account that's what we want to happen all right let's save it and check it out i'm going to say save and close so we're going to save and close and let's open up some reports. So I'm going to go down to the reports on the left-hand side. We're going to open up our favorite reports. That being, of course, uh, the balance sheet report. Let's take a look at the balance sheet report. I'm going to be opening that up. And uh, testing. I'm going to close up the hamburger up top. We're going to hold down control and scroll up just a bit. We'll scroll up just a bit so we can uh, see it a little bit more clearly. And so what we, what we were expecting, if we entered all four of these things to happen would be the 350 decreasing the materials and being recorded on the other side in the cost of goods sold. However, we're only doing 100 of it at this point in time, applying it out to job number 14, and then we'll do the following or other jobs in a future presentation. So here we have now then, notice the clearing account is up top, but nothing is in it, right? We recorded this transaction, but nothing went into that account because we wrote a, ch we wrote a check kind of form, which is a, an expense type of form, but there's no transaction related to it because we just used it in order to record, in essence, a journal entry, which includes the items. Going back to our uh, balance sheet then, what happened then is the raw materials went down, uh, not by the 350 yet, but by what we've entered the one time, which was gonna be that 100,000. So there's the 100,000 decreasing the raw materials if we were to, uh, click on that we go to our expense so there's our expense I'm gonna close this back out and uh, close this one back out if we go back up top then to the balance sheet let's go ahead and duplicate this tab so I'm gonna go to the tab up top right click on it to duplicate it and then go back to the tab to the left because I want to open up the hamburger so that I can then open up the reports where our second favorite report is and that is the balance or the profit and loss the income statement report so i'm going to go to the reports down below looking for that income statement so i'm going to hold down control and scroll down a little bit because it seems like funny things are happening it's not working right and we're going to go to the profit and loss so see i'm back at 100 percent, and it seemed to work good and then i'm back in the reports and that's when i close up the hamburger and then scroll back into like a hunt one i like it at one two five and then in our income statement we now have the the materials you can break out we have within the cost of goods sold i can i can shrink up the materials here to just show that 100,000 or we can expand the materials and show the detail that we hit we had entered in for the cement the render and and so on and so forth if we were to open this up then we're going to see the the more detailed information for any of the material items and of course that would then take us to that expense account as well these items being driven by uh, the jaw or, or the items <laughs> these accounts driven by the items that we set up the items then applying to these particular accounts the cost of goods sold account and then the materials account if we then take a look at the full cost of goods sold we're now at uh, that 100,000 which of course ties out 
to the 100,000 basically in job 14 that we wanted to apply out for the current time period for, for 2020, not including the beginning balance. If I was then to break this out and say, not, let's not look at it by total, but let's look at it by customer. And then it'll give us that detail. I'm gonna say review or run that report. Then we could see the detail for job number 14 currently in the current period for the 100,000 because that's what we have in the current period, breaking out to that 100,000 applied to job number 14. Now, that doesn't include the beginning balances. What if we take this back to 2019 so we can include all the open jobs at this point in time? So I'm gonna to try to bring back the beginning balance and take it across that end of year period, uh, which is December. I'm gonna say run that report and let's see what we have down here. Then, then now we got now job number 14 and 15. And if I get down to the bottom line number for job number 14, we're at the 141,000, right? 141,000, which ties out to the total for the job. So it's still open. This is the lifetime, not just in the current time period. And so there we have that. And we haven't entered, of course, for job 15 and 16, the materials that happened in 2020 yet. Uh, let's go ahead and right click on this tab again. Let's duplicate this tab. I'm going to right click on it and duplicate it. Let's go back to the tab to the left and just consider... Uh, the hamburger, let's open the hamburger up here. I'm not considering the hamburger. I'm, I mean, I'm kind of hungry, but I'm going to, I'm wanting to open the hamburger and then I'm going to scroll back down to get it back to a hundred percent so that we can then consider the projects tab. We're going to go to the projects tab over here. And obviously we can see similar detail within uh, the projects tab. Let's close that hamburger up, get it out of the way. It doesn't tempt us. And then we're going to go into uh, job number 14 and uh we then have our information now we're at the costs of the 141 and the profit so now you've got our cost of goods sold information the breakout of the materials in this format as well if we wanted to see the actual transactions that are just applied to this particular job we can do so here and we can also run reports specifically related to this job so in the next presentations we're going to be uh moving on doing similar process for job number 14 or job number 15 and 16. That's it for now. Let's get out of here. We will change the dates or the date should be 2020, somewhere within 2020. We can see on the balance sheet that the raw materials